Ed Miliband, the man who's been writing that manifesto, and for the Conservatives, uh, Theresa May, who uh, speaks for them on work and pensions. Welcome to you both. Before we get into manifestos, just like your take on uh, week one, as it were, we've all seen the opinion polls. Where do you think we are in the race? Well, we've had an argument about numbers and efficiency savings and all these issues. I think it's actually come down to an argument about values, though. What we've seen from the Conservatives is them saying, we're going to cut national insurance and public services will pay the price. And I actually think that that may have looked tactically like a, an advantage for them, but I think strategically they've made a big mistake because I think this election is going to come down to the Conservatives saying, we're not going to protect school spending, for example, and we're going to make this national insurance okay. cut. Where do you think we are uh, after the well, first week of campaigning? I, I, I think where we are after the first week is that the choice is even clearer to, for people, which is that choice between five more years of Gordon Brown, more of the same with debt waste and taxes, or the change that the country needs under David Cameron and the Conservatives. I think what people are seeing from us is that we're the party that's actually got the energy and the ideas and the values to uh, take the country forward. And in terms of the, the competition, uh, you are still in the lead, but you're not looking strong enough to form an overall government. Is that right? Well, the polls are going up and down, as you know at the moment, uh, Adam. There are some that have had us 10 points, 10, 11 points ahead, some that have had us uh, few, fewer points ahead. We actually have never been complacent about the election, and we've always said that. What we're doing is going out there and take that, taking that message across. And, of course, this week, crucially, the message that a Conservative government would avoid Labour's jobs tax that will kill yeah. recovery. And your message, presumably, is that you are the underdogs. Yeah, we are the underdogs in this election. We've been for some uh, time, but I think we're in the rearview mirror and we're catching up. And uh, I hope our manifesto will help us. Because uh, to, you, um, to, because to you do, you do seem to be already uh, putting out feelers to the Liberal Democrats as if you're expecting a, a minority government. I mean, Lord Adon is followed by the Prime Minister himself. I'm not sure it's about putting out feelers. Look, the, the central argument of our manifesto is that we've seen two seismic events uh, in 2007, 2008. One around the economy uh, and secondly around the political crisis caused by uh, expenses la last year. And the test of any manifesto is can you right. respond to those events? And, and the mandate we're seeking is to rebuild our okay. economy in a different way, uh, to reform public services as we protect spending on public services, and to reform our politics. That's, a, that's what yeah. we stand for. See, it's not it, about feelers to the Liberal Democrats. Yeah. But you see, the public, I think, might be a bit confused because I suspect, uh, Theresa May, when we see your manifesto, you too are going to offer to uh, sort out the economy, protect public services, and um, uh, to clean up politics. Well, indeed. I mean, we think that, that we think the country does need to change. We think that if we just carry on as we will, and as we have done with this debt waste and taxes under Gordon Brown and the Labour Party, that more of the same actually will not be what the country needs to get it moving again. And we will, we, our proposals will be about changing the economy, our society but, and politics. But we do seem uh, at last to have a focus in as much as if you take uh, the national insurance row, uh, if you take uh, what is now being proposed on uh, the marriage tax, although relatively small amounts of money, I mean almost symbolic amounts of money compared to problems, the Conservatives seem to be back in the position of saying vote for us, lower taxes and smaller government, including uh, perhaps a bit of a squeeze on public services. Well, the, we're, if any party that wins the election, whichever party wins the election, is going to have to bring forward cuts in public spending. That's clear. We've been clear all along that we need to get to start to get to grips with the deficit this year, which is why we're talking about the six billion of, of efficiency savings, which is things like yes, possibly freezing some posts so that when posts fall vacant in back offices, those posts aren't filled. But, Theresa, can I, but it's also yeah. about well, Ed, can, can, I I just, can I just finish yeah, the the, sure. the, uh, the point that I'm making? Um, so. What we're talking about is getting to grips with that deficit earlier than the government is. But also, yeah. we do think it's important for the recovery. We don't kill it by Labour's yeah. jobs tax. Yeah, but, I mean, your, your position is basically taxes are going to go up and we know how to invest money to stimulate the economy better than letting the market take care of that well, by putting we, we, money well, into people's pockets. Well, we set out the tax, the tax rises that we, we've, we've proposed uh, and, and we're also saying that it isn't the time for government to step aside when it comes to supporting the recovery, for example, and the things we're proposing on job guarantees for young people, the long-term unemployed, shows our determination both for responsibility but to give people opportunity. But let me just ask Theresa this question. Uh, if you're committed to the public service, Theresa, why won't you make the same promise uh, on schools that you've made well, on Hang on, hang on. I will come off that. I'm, I'm asking the question for now. Uh, let's just uh, 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 talk about uh, this economic position because sure. I put it to you that Financial Times yesterday, for example, says quite clearly 
both parties really are, are presenting a false prospectus because neither of you are really concentrating on the big issue of really bringing the deficit down and indeed dealing with the national debt. I mean, both your proposals are flimsy. You're talking about spending on education. She's talking about tax cuts. Cloud cuckoo land, given but, where the economy but, is. But I don't agree that our proposals are flimsy. Look, we set out the tax rises that we're going to put in place, most of which have been opposed by the Conservatives. Yes, but almost every economic expert and independent says it's not enough. It's not going to go far enough. They say the same about... Well, I was going to explain not what, what, what the proposals yeah. we're making. Tax rises... Economic growth, essential. Protecting the recovery this year is essential to get the, the extra tax revenues in to help reduce the deficit. But, you know, and, and, and arguing the, over the let phasing me just finish this of £6 point. billion pounds but let is me just not this. going to cut the deficit or really make a great difference me, to the recovery. I'm just going to get to the third part of it, which is, yeah. yes, so we'll, we will have to bear down on spending. Uh, we said we'll protect frontline investment in education, health and policing. Outside that, there will have to be reductions, cuts in lower priority programmes. We've said that. We've set out 20 billion of reductions in efficiency savings on public sector pay and pensions, cuts to lower priority programmes like regeneration. Yeah. So we've set out very clearly the changes that uh, we're, yeah. going, we're going to make. The, the contrast, though, is that the Conservatives will not make those guarantees on okay. frontline investment can in you, school I mean, spending, for example. Does anyone believe the guarantees when they look at the straight state of the economy? me. Well, I, I, I mean, they, they ring fence stuff, you've ring fence stuff, but neither of you can afford it. Thanks well, I, very much. Well, no, no, no thanks very much, because I think we can afford it, and we've shown how we can uh, get the deficit down. But, but the key to this is also economic growth. Uh, and also making those investments okay. in the industrial okay. policy, the green industries okay. of the future, which will actually make our I economy mean, Theresa, I mean, it looks that, like the Conservatives have worked out that with the voters uh, who a little bit have got their heads in the sand, that actually promising tax cuts is more popular than talking about an age of austerity and uphill climbs to uh, get to the sunlit uplands. No, because what we've done is, is that there are sort of, if you like, three stages to this. I mean, we've, we have set out how we believe we can, with advice from Peter Gershon and Martin Reid, who've advised the government in the past, make some efficiency savings this, this financial year, right, immediately after the general election that year, to start that job of bearing down on the deficit and getting government spending on a lower part. It's not enough, we've also said, Well, I've said there were three yeah. elements, Adam, yeah. so I'll, if I can put the other two as well. We've also announced a number of areas where we've been very specific about the tough decisions we're willing to make, like that public sector pay freeze yeah. for all but the million lowest public sector workers, and in due course uh, actually raising, bringing forward the date at which the state pension age rises to 66. Yeah. But also, of course, after an election, we would have a spending review, a spending review which the government had said well, originally they would have had. Well, they would have well, had it, should have had it before the election. As well. so, they, uh, so what's they the difference? Let's talk about some election. specifics. First of all, uh, we understand no major spending pledges in the manifesto tomorrow. Is that right? The, the way I put it is it's a bit more like a 1997, 1997 manifesto than 2001 or 2005. Which is also we know, a minivan production. Yeah. Well, yeah, the other, the other yeah. one. Uh, there's, there's, there's less money around. We're, we're not going to go around spraying around promises that we can't afford, like the Conservative Party uh, is doing, including on uh, national insurance. Everything will be very tightly costed, and, and, and there won't be big spending commitments. And I think that's right, given the, the situation. But, but let me make this point. We can still see improvements in our public yeah. services. And part of the argument of this manifesto is how do we drive further reform yeah. and improvement what in our schools? What do you schools, think the most eye-catching thing in it is? Uh, well, you'll have to wait for tomorrow. Well, what about the but People's Bank? Yeah, I think the, the People's I mean, Bank is... linking up the post offices is important. I think one thing that is very important is that we are saying something we haven't... And you can dictate interest rates, can you? Because apparently you're going to cap interest rates. So this is intervention in the market worthy of the old Clause 4. Well, I don't think it's quite Clause 4 because we're not, we're not proposing nationalisation. I think it is well, right to say... you're going to dictate interest rates. I, I think it is right to say that we are no longer willing okay. to tolerate a situation where low-income consumers okay. are ripped okay. off with payday loans and doorstep lending. Trisman, what do you think their best proposal is? <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't seen their manifesto, unlike Ed Miliband, who has been uh, who's been writing it but, the but I mean there is a lot of nonsense I mean you've been teased wisely for example about this idea of three strikes and you're out and not getting paid benefit for a long period of time if you cheat on your benefit three times it turns out no one's ever cheated on their benefit three times so that's a no, worthless no, promise no. No, let's be absolutely clear about uh, what we're talking about. We're talking about setting a tough regime for those who are cheating yeah. on their benefit, which does include three strikes. So if but, you, but no if one's ever, no one's ever got ah, three strikes. No, but 
the, the figures are very clear. The figures that have been su shown suggest that nobody's been convicted of three strikes. Actually, we're talking not just of people who are being convicted, because there are a range of options and a range of measures that are currently used by government against it's people not really who are benefit. Much money, though, but it, it gives. But it's about sending a message. It's about sending a okay. message to people that we will be tough on those who are defrauding the system. Because what we want in the welfare system is a fair system. But a lot of it supports messages. people who need three it. Three pounds a week and to married couples. I mean, so what? Adam, these are not worthless messages. Actually, well, saying. Do you really think three pounds saying, a week is, is going to make the difference to anybody on whether they get married or not. But, but the point of this is not simply saying to people that suddenly lots of people are going to get married because they get three pounds a week or the hundred and fifty pounds a year. The point of it is saying that government believes that stability in families is, is important. Government believes that marriage and civil partnerships are important institutions because they are about commitment. Uh -uh. And sending that clear message about commitment, I think, is very important. It's like on the welfare benefits, actually saying to people, we shouldn't be defrauding the system. We want a fair system where people who are genuinely in need are supported right. and those who are cheating the system actually do get tough sanctions against them. There, we're going to have to leave it, I'm afraid. I can see our next guests lining up. They are Caroline Flint and Nigel Farage, who will be looking at the Sunday Papers.